So now what I want to go through is um, a student registration. It's going to be very similar in many ways. Create an account. This time, since it's a student, they'll click on the student registration. Again, anything with an asterisk is required. Anything that's not is not. Again, password is very important for the students to remember. All right, so the questions that the students will have to answer. What type of school do they attend? Is it public, private, charter, or homeschool? Is their school a Title I? Um, we use this information um, to help us if we need to um, support any students or schools with any kind of registration, um, et cetera. Uh, we also use it for our demographic in information that we supply to uh, the Society for Science, um, who oversees all of the science fairs, as well as some of our funders. The students don't know, they may ask you. What type of fair did the student place first in? Did they place first in a school district or regional fair? And what was the name of it? Was it the, um, you know, the whatever school, whatever district or whatever regional fair? At this point, students will have to make a choice. If they are an, uh, a student who is just doing an individual project, they will click on start a new project. If they are a team project, which means they have either two or three um, individuals working on the same project, the first person of that team will start a new entry. The additional team members we'll click link to an existing entry, start with a new entry. So the school, here's where it is. If you have not, or the teachers in your school have not registered, uh, the student won't be able to select a teacher. So if I said we were at this school, there's no teacher selected. So the student won't be able to move on in their registration. It's really important that the, um, the teachers at the school register and that the students select them. And then again, their particular grade level. And depending on their grade level, will determine what forms show up for them as they progress through registration. So the title, again, anything with an asterisk needs to be um, completed. Anything without an asterisk does not need to be completed. So they'll need to put in their title. They'll need to select their category. We have elementary and all the different categories that elementary um, um, projects can be, uh, the junior division and all the junior division projects that can be, and then the senior division projects. Um, they'll need to put in their description. All of these other areas right now do not have any asterisks, so they don't need to be completed and should not be completed at this time. One thing I want to highlight, the senior division projects, ninth through 12th grade students, are the only students who need to upload their project um, slides their quad chart and any images that they would like to have. They are also able to upload a video link of their project if they want to do so, but that is not required. That is optional. But their project slides, their quad chart, and some project images, uh, well, slides and quad chart are required for senior division projects only. Images, are just um, optional, and then a video link is optional. Elementary and junior division projects. Those students do not need to upload anything here. The senior division project judges 
will use this information to review the projects prior to judging because those projects tend to be more in depth. And also there is that consideration of potentially moving on to ISEF. So the senior division judges like to have time to go in and review projects prior to actually judging them. So again, senior division projects, slides, quad chart required. Elementary junior, not required. Save and continue. And this is what I was talking about with the forms. Depending on the grade level selected, elementary grades five and six, junior grades seven and eight, or high school grades nine and 12, will determine what forms come up here. So this is uh, a pick seventh grade. So this individual got the um, SRC form for junior division. Now, elementary and junior division students do not have to upload any paperwork unless they are working on a project that involves human subjects, vertebrate animals, or potentially hazardous biologic agents. And when talking about human subjects, even if it's conducting surveys, a student is conducting a project where they are asking individual survey questions, or they're doing a project that involves their household pet, guinea pig, cat, whatever, or anything dealing with a potentially hazardous biological agent, molds, bacteria, et cetera, they need to make sure that they have gotten prior approval and that they complete this form. So in order to find this form or to complete this form, you hit upload file. You come over here, it's kind of um, misleading in my mind. It says the blank file or template. And then it comes up with the form that you need. So if you're not sure if any of your students um, need to complete this, you can read the first half of this document and it gives you all the information about mold and, mold and bacteria, about um, what forms they need to submit, um, ex, uh, what they need to do in order to get it approved, tells you what to do if you have questions about human subjects, et cetera. And then the second half of it is actually the form that they would need to approve or complete and get uploaded. So it has, you know, spaces for the students' names and grade levels, um, the teacher, who, which adult is working with them, whether their project involves any of those items I just listed. Um, and then it has some questions for them to complete. So that would need to be completed and then signed off by the parents and the teacher. Um, and then it would need to be um, uploaded into the project file. You save it as a PDF and then you, you upload it. Senior division students, let's get, go back in and I'm going to change him to be 11th grade. Senior division students have a lot of other forms they need to look at. Senior division students have four forms that every single senior division student will need to complete for their project. All senior divisions will need to complete the adult sponsor, the research plan checklist, the approval form, and the abstract. Again, to, to locate those, click upload file, blank template. And these are easy. These are fillables. So the, the whoever is filling it out can fill it right out there and then um, download it as the um, with your changes, and then it will save the form for you. But it goes through and has all the information that they will need um, and gives them information on questions to consider, et cetera. So all four of these required documents are for every senior division project. The rest of these forms need to be completed based on the project themselves. So if your student is doing a project and they're conducting that project at a research institute or in an industrial setting, they will need to, to um, get this form completed and filled out. Um, 
And so some of this is um, this form uh, has to be at the, the booth um, for, for the judges to look at. But this is to be completed um, with the information and it has to be signed by the supervising adult and the institution, et cetera. If your, um, if your project um, involves human participants, same thing. It gives you all the information uh, that they need to fill out. For the um, IRB approval, this has to be completed by the IRB, the um, Institutional Review Board. If your school does not have one or your district does not have one, um, this can be um, completed by our IRB, but all this information needs to be completed. Um, if you're using, you know, if it's a continuation project, let's say your students started on the research last year and they decided they wanted to continue working on that project this year, then the continuation project form. And this is where they um, are very specific about what they did in a previous year, whether it was last year or, um, you know, a couple of years ago, what was the previous research done and what's the current. So, you know, they'll list all their current information, title, uh, change in goals, et cetera, to current year versus previous. And then that will need to be um, signed off on and submitted. So again, depending on what the project is, we'll determine which forms need to be completed. Okay, so we did paperwork. So this is where um, the individual will determine, you know, that they'll, they'll read and give assurance that they understand that there is a registration fee uh, and that depending on how they're going to pay, it's either by credit card or school purchase order or check. It gives some information about if they're paying with a check, et cetera. Um, if paying by purchase orders, this is really important for the teachers to know. Please don't just say 15 registrations for AZCEF. That doesn't really help us. Please list the students' names on the purchase order. Um, because when we're trying to go back in and make sure that we are applying the registration fee to the right student, it makes it much easier for us to do, and we have to do much less detective work if the names are right on the purchase order. And then the student will mark whether or not they um, will give consent to have their pictures taken. And then we also have a form that is sent to the parents, but this is like the student can say, I will let you know that there are, there are a lot of opportunities for a lot of really cool photo ops at uh, this year with the um, having the Jumbotron. So that'll be you know pretty important to know. And then the student has to get to this part and determine how they're going to pay. So they just have to say how they think they're going to pay. So if their parents or somebody's paying for a credit card, they just get in put in the card information and hit pay and register. If they're paying with a check, that's fine. It just tells them here where to send the check to. And again, to include the participant name on the check. Or if the school is gonna pay the registration fee, they mark that they understand that the school is gonna pay for the registration fee um, and then they move on. At this point, this is where the students are given their project ID number. So we ask that um, on all of the AZCEF um, physical poster boards, as well as for the senior division, the quad chart and the um, slide deck, they do not put their name on the front of it, but that they do put their project ID on the front. Um, the name, can be put on the back of the physical project board, um, but we don't want any names or schools or anything like that identified on the front of the project board. So this student has now registered. So again, if he wants to go back up and check anything or upload his documents, if he's in the senior division, 
He finds his name in the top right corner, clicks on my profile, and goes to whichever tab he wants to change. If he's wanting to add his information, um, his slide deck quad chart, if, he, if he's at the senior division, he can go to his entry tab and upload those now because he now knows what his um, project ID is. He also now has a project key if he is going to be um, uh, on a team project. And that project key is really important um, for connecting student projects together. Are there any questions on student registration? I just want to ask really quick for the junior form, it's only filled out if they if they're doing something with mold, animals, or dealing with people, correct? Yes. Yeah, if they're if they're doing a project that has nothing to do with any of those, then they don't have to have any forms. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So again this year, I've done this um, since COVID, since I guess 2021. Um, I'm hosting office hours and I will be hosting office hours based on division just because there are so many differences between paperwork, project requirements, et cetera. So um, my elementary and junior division office hours will be on Monday, February 12th, 26th, and March 11th. Um, they'll be from four to five and they all have the same Zoom link. So that'll be easy. For senior division, they will also be from four to five, mostly on Mondays, um, Monday the 19th, March 4th, and then um, Tuesday, March 12th. Since Friday, March 15th is the last day of registration, I want to make sure everybody has equal opportunities to jump online and ask any questions that they may have. And then again, I had mentioned that... Um, for any questions that you may have, project requirements, you go to our website. Um, you can either go to azscience.org um, or you can go to azcef um, at azscience.org. Either one of those will work. The about page just gives general information, important dates, uh, the meeting slides. And then so today I'll add our meeting slide here. Uh, for anyone who needs to, to look at any of those previous meetings. Student and registration. Um, again, broken out based on divisions. So elementary and junior division. You can find the qualifications for participating, the 12 categories, project requirements. Um, this is the same thing, the SRC form that you saw in ZFairs. It gives you some research um, ideas and resources to do research at home. The display and safety regulations, which is super important. Um, and we will go through in depth at our next meeting. And then those same forms for the senior division with the um, addition of um, what's called the ICEF wizard. And so this link will take the senior division students through a series of questions that will then help them identify exactly which forms they need to make sure and complete. So if you've got senior division teachers who are like, I don't really know for sure what I need to make sure my students complete, have her students or have his or her um, students go through here and it will really help them determine exactly which forms they will need. 